Hello guys, and welcome back to the Minecraft server. I'm in a little bit of a tight space here. Hello. How you doing? So I'm down in my basement where all the sugar cane is. If you come over here, you can check and we have a bunch of sugar cane to go through. I just do that on my off time. Surprisingly enough, the time I'm doing this is typically when we record our Minecraft or our church mag podcast. So when you hear me playing on uh, Church Mag's Minecraft server during the podcast, probably about 50% of the time I'm just trading sugar or changing sugar cane into paper, trading the paper, getting some emeralds um, because I'm getting a lot of experience from that, as well as that's how I've been getting my tools. Um, I know that diamonds is a limited supply on here. So I get my tools, I get my armor, I'm just trying to conserve as much as possible. Plus, um, a lot of the new players um, are trying to find some new stuff going on. As you can see, we're also getting our tree farm going. Um, we're way behind on jungle wood, so we're getting the jungle wood going on here. We have a new couple of new people on the server. One of them's on right now. So I don't know where their new place is. I haven't been around while they've been on, but we will find that sometime soon. So that being said, let's go ahead and take on today's tasks so I've never shown you guys um, this coming thing but this has actually been on the server probably since the very beginning I know that we had had a wither fight a while back but we actually have a place for wither farms um, for those of you that haven't seen it yet the store just gets me every time um, so we got the blaze spawner we got the arena we actually have the water temple all the way over there as well. So we can go this way. And this is the route for a lot of these different things. We're actually going to go over to the Blaze Farm. But actually go past it because that's where we want to go. Because that's where we have our Wither Farm going on. So that's what we're going to do this episode. We are literally going to just fight a bunch of mobs. Hopefully not die. We'll see how this goes. I haven't actually been to the Wither Farm um, since it's since probably this year. So this has been quite a while that we've been running this. Hello, Mr. Blaze. So we're going to do some of this on camera. Hopefully we'll get a couple of withers. Someone built a new place. That's cool. Um, hopefully we'll get a couple of wither heads. I don't know about you guys and your experience as far as trying to get withers. But for me personally, it seems like it can vary very rapidly for myself. Sometimes it can be a matter of I get a wither in 10 minutes, and so we may get one on the camera, or it may take a couple hours to get one. Um, so it just depends from my personal pers perspective on this process. And we already have a candidate. Come here, mister. It's not that we don't get withers either. For me, wither skeletons happen a lot. But then the actual weather doesn't drop what I want it to drop. See, that literally drops nothing for me. That's wonderful. Thanks for nothing. Come on. Give me your stuff. So we'll get a lot of stuff in the meantime. Um, but I want to talk to you guys while you're here about a conversation that um, has been on my mind recently. Uh, the idea of fear of missing out. Now... This is Minecraft theology, so we're stretching this a little bit, but I think this is really important, at least in a modern understanding of theology. I've got a couple more over here. This is really rare. I don't see skeletons out here much. We also might get some gold from pigment. We'll see. So, <clears throat> thank you for that. He's going to launch him, isn't he? Um, so, for me, this is going to be interesting, trying to both fight and talk about the theology. This will be fun. So... For me, the conversation about trying to have this fear of missing out. Well, let me first of all talk about this. So there's this philosophy of fear of missing out. And the, the cool term for it is called FOMO. And the idea is that there is a lot of stuff digitally online that you want to consume. Whether it's social media or blogging or YouTube videos. Um, just what is the latest gossip and news that's happening doesn't really matter what the outlet is for the actual stuff being consumed it may have nothing to do with anything you've the, you personally are into normally it could be a matter of actually i'm just gonna whoa hello it could be a matter of you just have a fear of missing out on anything so 
I'm not into fashion, but maybe I fear the idea that I'll miss out on some kind of fashion tip. Probably not. But this idea of fearing and missing out of the latest and greatest stuff, we always need to stay on Facebook. That's the whole idea behind... Wait. Is it over here? Oh, it's over here. Sorry. I have a place where I go and reset all this area. And so I go down here, and sometimes there's withers down here as well. But it resets because I moved too far away from the those chunks that we can actually spawn more mobs up there. So the idea is you're afraid that you're going to miss out, whether that's some cool conversation online or the next YouTube video. And so with this fear of missing out, we just feel addicted on Facebook. And that's why we get stuck on there. That's why that's honestly what news sites feed off of is hoping that you just constantly are sticking around on their site, trying to just continuously consume the news. No. And so they want you to keep coming back that's really why CNN is so successful is we don't want to miss out. Um, I experienced this significantly with uh, 9-11. When 9-11 was happening, we were constantly glued to our TVs. And then, I don't know if anybody knows this with Colorado, but then Colorado had something called the Waldo Canyon Fire. I was directly impacted by that. I was actually in the sphere of potentially getting our house burnt down with all of our possessions. And I literally loaded up my two vehicles and took it away. And so I was glued to that TV because I wanted to know if my house and my, all my possessions were going to burn down. Now that's an extreme case of fear of missing out. Um, certainly there's less severe processes. There's less appropriate ones as well. I mean, I don't think anybody would have said, Oh my goodness, Jeremy, why are you watching so much TV worried about this canyon fire that's coming through and potentially going to bring down your house? Nobody's going to say that. But the idea of worried about what the latest Apple news is and needing to watch their stream while I'm at work and potentially risking losing my job, that could cause a problem. That's part of this fear of missing out process. And it causes a lot of problems with work, with relationships, with just life in general and feeling like you have this addiction. Um, it's actually a, a case study I had done in counseling of the idea of fear of missing out within social media. And it was part of a much larger uh, research project I was doing, but this idea that could we potentially lose out on something big? Um, for me, Snapchat is the epitome of fear of missing out. If you don't watch someone's snaps, within the first 24 hours, you're never gonna get to see them unless you ask the person directly to send them to you. And that's assuming that they have actually recorded it somehow at the same time of actually producing the content themselves. And so the likelihood is you've missed out on it and you're never gonna get to see it. And so you're always checking Snapchat because you need to make sure you keep on what's happening. Even if it's just simply someone making some kind of zucchini bread or showing off their latest wardrobe or who knows what it is. And that's really the idea behind it is, is people are making a lot of success on the idea of fear of missing out. And where does that fall within Christianity in general, as well as within church technology? I think the church technology is at the cusp of having to work within the fear of missing out. If you are a church that is on Snapchat, you are, I'm going to use a strong word here. I'm going to say perpetuating the concerns of fear of missing out, though I don't necessarily think that you're doing anything wrong. I think that the fear of missing out is a is a potentially good thing. I mean, think about the gospel. Whenever I went into youth ministry, or whenever I was at camp for youth ministry, the thing was is don't miss out because you never know when your life is going to end. And you can miss out on this opportunity for going to heaven, and you don't know what's going to happen to you. Now, I think that there's probably better ways of presenting that, but at the same time, you may never get a chance to present the gospel to these people ever again. So not only on the camper side of things, but also on the side of the, the counselors, I think that there's this fear of, we may never get a chance again to present the gospel and we need to make the most convincing and, and polished arguments to these campers because we want them to know who Jesus is, because they may never hear Jesus ever again. There's a little bit of a fallacy in that statement, but I think for a lot of people, that's what's running through their minds. Um, 
So this idea of fear of missing out, I think, is perpetuated in the in the church tech culture. Now, when I say that, the thing that comes to mind whenever I was thinking about what to do for this episode is having a conversation with someone about church tech marketing and emails and how in the world do you get to inbox zero. And it's not like it's trying to just answer every single person's question. Um, They're wanting to do a lot of research for churches, for their church, uh, because they want to create the best email newsletter ever so that they're not only maximizing their impact, they're creating something that would be worthy of God if he were to have an inbox himself. And it's a really wonderful idea of let's have the best creativity we possibly could have. And so he subscribes to a lot of different newsletters really is trying to just engage in that process. And this is actually the, I think the fourth time I, I first started hearing about this in a, in a similar conversation, but just last night I had the same conversation with someone. And so this idea of having a potential missing of great newsletters is just sitting on the back of this person's mind of what happens if I don't get through my inbox, get to inbox zero. Um, and so the question was, is how do we go about this? How in the world can we best utilize our resources as far as the inbox? And I recommended going through and purging whatever you did not actually read for that week. So the idea behind it is you have an inbox and you have a lot of different things and it's it's not important emails that need to be taken care of. Otherwise, the church bulletin isn't going to get taken care of. Can I get that? Okay, got it. It's not a matter of um, a failure on your part if some if you don't read that email. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the promotionals. The someone has done a good job of sorting the emails, and so all these emails go to a specific section of your account. And so, if you miss it, it's not that it's not the end of the world. But at the same time, if you miss it, you may miss out on a great idea of doing emails and so someone else is going to get the opportunity and not you oh hello Um, we actually put these bars up but i think sometimes it's restricting um so this idea of missing out on the next big thing is scary what happens if you actually do delete those emails without reading them i'm talking like hundreds of emails at a time if you only set aside one hour to look at all the amazing emails get a quick visual of what they're trying to do Um, you may only get through 50 of 200 emails and then just mass delete everything else. And there's this mentality that I can't do that because what if, what if I'm going to miss out? What if I'm going to, um, not do what God has called me to do? I think that there's a lot that can get laced within the fear of missing out, but the conversation starts there but doesn't end there because that perpetuates this anxiety that I need to do something right. Whereas my own philosophy within church technology is that we do the best that we can and let the grace of God and the wisdom and the, the impact that God has on our ministry finish things off. Um, if it were a matter of let's get this right, I would be an utter failure within church technology because of how many times I've forgotten to put a battery in of updating all the software. And so I've had this happen where I've had a software update in the middle of a worship service and I had to restart the computer in the midst of worship slides being up on the screen. And it was just absolutely devastating. I was so frustrated that this was happening. And so if it was a matter of us being perfect and being successful, um, I would fail at that expectation right away. So I wonder what you guys think on this conversation about missing out of the fear of not being able to, I don't know, I guess I don't know what the best word is of not consuming or not experiencing what God has for you, but at the same time, how that, how the, the church tech world also perpetuates that, especially with Snapchat. Um, But it doesn't just have to be Snapchat. It can just be anything digital. Um, I think that with our podcast, sometimes 
that happens with our news feeds that happens um, because Facebook just flies through your news articles how in the world are you gonna keep up Twitter is even worse of I need to be in control of my feed I think that's the big argument between Facebook and Twitter right now is oh we got one sweet hello hello so I think that's I think that's a big conversation between Twitter and Facebook right now. Facebook, you don't have as much control over your feed right now because they are the one that curates your news feed. And Twitter, it's just a flow of consciousness. And for some people that have to have that control because they don't want to miss out on anything within their follower accounts, that's a big deal. Whereas Facebook, you're going to miss something. It's not if, but you will. Um, because it's not just a stream of consciousness. And so you don't know what Facebook has and has not picked for you. And so where do we lie with this? And how in the world can we help serve the church to better process this? I think that it starts, w first of all, with priorities. Um, if we miss out on something, is that okay? Um, and that seems like a very simple question until we realize our addictions, until we realize our propensity to constantly be glued to our phones and social media or whatever else it is that we're doing and i think it also goes towards this mentality that we need to let go and and just let god decide what is going to happen you are a big boy i don't have enough magma cream that is truly the case wow this is gonna be a lot so where can church technology serve in this? Um, I can really only speak for myself in this process of not perpetuating that. And I think that comes in the conversations of, of why not just inbox zero B, go through all your emails real quick, identify which ones are important, and then don't spend the time you need to on the other ones of if you love blog viewing all the blogs, but that notification, like I have this irrational thing of when my notification a notification pops up on my phone i have to view it which means i need to purge my notifications quite frequently if you're not adding value to my life you probably don't need to be on my phone and that's just something that i struggle with that's why my twitter follow account will probably never go above 250 people and 250 people is like extreme for me and so i'm constantly just who can we get rid of on my list? Not because I don't value people. In fact, I'm constantly struggling with that. Of I, I do value people, but I want to use the tool to the best of my ability. Um, I know that there's Twitter lists, but that's just trying to section people off. And then I got to check all my lists and I'm trying to simplify. I'm trying to minimize this process. Um, I love to be a minimalist and try to just experience it as it's moving forward and really love to just kind of be in the moment so that's one of the things that my wife has taught me over and over again in our marriage is how to just live in the moment and so i wonder about you guys do you have different digital habits how would you if i gave you the advice of just go ahead and delete all the the emails what does that do to you is there a better option that i haven't considered that I really should consider. Um, and what do you think about just the whole conversation? Let's just get rid of that one. Um, what do you think about the idea of fear of missing out? Do you think it's an actual thing? Do you think that it's just kind of a bunch of malarkey? Um, and is it something that church technology should even be concerned about? Um, am I making too big of a deal of our role within church technology to invest and um, manage for the church and for ourselves. Um, so I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Um, there's a lot more that could be discussed on this as far as um, productivity and prioritizing. Um, but I just kind of wanted to have this general conversation first. Um, if you guys come up with some great conversation pieces for that, so maybe we'll go down that route. I just want to start the dialogue with you guys, hear what you guys have to say on this. So I've got two more of these guys to get before we do the Wither fight. That's going to be our next Let's Play, um, along with another little surprise that I'm not going to share just yet because it impacts a lot of the people on the server. So, leave you guys comments down below. Am I way off base? Do you agree with me? Um, do you have better solutions than I have? 
Uh, so sound off in the comments, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. See you guys.